The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say. It's your favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, another sweltering summer day is hanging over Summerfield. But that doesn't mean business isn't progressing as usual at the water department. The great Gildersleeve secretary is bustling around the office, and the great man himself is at his desk. In fact, he's practically on it. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Am I disturbing you? Oh, no, no, Bessie. Come right in. The mayor's office called and wondered if you had the vacation schedule made out for this office. Oh, yes. Must do that. You have your feet on the desk. Do they hurt? Hurt? No, Bessie. They feel fine. When summer comes, there's nothing like getting the feet higher than the head. I think it has something to do with nature. Yes, sir. What are you reading? Yeah, I'm studying, Bessie. Hydraulics and water pressure. Well, it's such a nice day, I hardly know what I've been reading. <laughs> I know what you've been reading. Baseball. Huh? Your little book inside the big book is showing. Oh. Well, walking down this morning, I saw it on the newsstand. Oh, don't apologize, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have my love story magazine here inside my dictation pad. We'll read together. Yeah. <laughs> now, Bessie, we can't run a water department that way. What would the mayor think? But you... I'm the water commissioner, Bessie. And if you have a love story magazine here in the office, you better turn it over to me right away. Well, all right. But I can have it back at 5 o'clock, can't I? We'll see, Bessie. Now, you'd better get to work. Yes, sir. Ooh, that Bessie. What a magazine. Love digest. I should throw it in the wastebasket. Eee, nice cover. <laughs> Bathing suits certainly have changed. In the last month, even. I don't know how they do it. Well, Gildersleeve. Hello. Wonder if I shouldn't go to the seashore this summer. Ooh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Gildersleeve, what are you doing with your feet on the desk? Are those my feet? And what are you reading? Well, I am, I'm reading this book on hydraulics and water pressure, you see? I see. What are those magazines you have inside the book? Magazines? Baseball. Well... And what's this? Love Digest. <laughs> I, I came in here to talk about your vacation schedule, but perhaps the vacation you need is a permanent one. Huh? Think it over, Gildersleeve, and I'll take these magazines. What? You never get your reports in on time. Now I catch you reading. I never saw such an office run in such a slipshod manner. Now, Mr. Mayor, I run a very strict office. Just ask Bessie. That's hard to believe. Good day. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes? Can I have the Love Digest back at 5 o'clock? What? It belongs to my secretary. <laughs> When do we take our vacation this year, Anki? Uh, vacation? Oh, Marjorie, the mayor was in talking about that today. Yeah? When's he giving you yours, Unc? Well, he nearly gave it to me this morning. <laughs> we didn't quite complete our discussion. Let's go early, Unc, before school's out. Leroy? Let's rent that cabin up in the mountains again, huh? Cabin? Why not go to some nice resort where a girl can meet some interesting people? Yeah, boys. Now, Marjorie, resorts cost money. Where I can dance and wear pretty clothes. See, Unc, boys. Quiet, infant. Please, Unky. Marjorie, we can't afford those things. Francie's going to Europe. Uh, I don't know where her father gets the money. That's the trouble with us. We never have enough money. We can't go anyplace important. No, Marjorie. See, Unc? Boys. 
Nobody appreciates me around here. She doesn't know how hard I work for our money. I do, Unc. Can I have a quarter of it for the movies? No, Troy. <laughs> We're saving our money. We may try to go to some nice resort this year. I'll get it. Never mind, Bertie. I'll get it. Be glad to get it. It's probably for me, Bertie. I'll get it. I'm here. Be glad to get it. Never mind, Bertie. I'll get it. I came in here all the way from the kitchen. Might as well get it. Well, I got up. I might as well get it. Glad to get it. Thank you, Bertie. No, but... for corn sakes, I'll get it. Sit down, Leroy. Anybody at home? Oh, hello, Judge. Good evening, all. Hi. Rang the bell twice, but nobody answered. Evening, Judge. Would have been glad to get it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, let's go in the living room, Horace. I'd like to have a word with you, Gildy, in your private study. What? Excuse us, Leroy. Sure. What's in your craw now, Judge? You'll find out soon enough. We'd better sit down. Well, Judge? And close the door. Oh, my goodness. There. Does that satisfy you, Judge? You want me to plug up the keyhole? Gildy? The mayor is threatening to take your job away from you. Oh, for it. Is that why you called me in here, Judge? The mayor is always threatening me. This time it's serious. I happen to know that you are top man on the mayor's must list. Must? Must go. Oh. <laughs> now, where did you hear that? Well, my secretary always has lunch with the tax collector secretary, who always has breakfast with the mayor's secretary. And the mayor's secretary told the tax collector secretary... Who, who told, told my your sec secretary... Oh, all right, Judge. What did she say? Just what I told you. And if the mayor catches you neglecting your duties once more, out you go. Let him try it. I'll tell him a thing or two. I've been waiting to do it for quite a while. Now, now, Gildy, you can't afford to take that attitude. You have a little family to think of, you know. Uh, yes. And if you apply yourself, work at your job, who knows? Why, do you know the Commissioner of Public Works got a $20 raise last month? He did? Turn over a new leaf, Gildy, before it's too late. By George, I'll do it. And may I be the first to congratulate you? Okay. And let's open the door. It's getting stuffy in here. Why do you put goose grease on your shoes, Judge? <laughs> and I assure you that the matter will be attended to immediately. Yours for better service to Summerfield, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Water Commissioner. Have you got that, Bessie? I hope so. Get those letters out immediately, Bessie. Yes, sir. My goodness, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're a radio cyclone of efficiency. It just shows what you can do when you apply yourself, Bessie. You see, I've cleared nearly everything off my desk. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't know your desk had a glass top. Y yes, sir. Uh... <laughs> Get the letters out, Bessie. I'm going to do some reading. Oh, shall I bring you my love digest? No, Bessie. I'm going to read this book on hydraulics. Well, don't stand there with your mouth open, Bessie. Get those letters out. Yes, sir. Uh, looks like Annie Oakley. <laughs> now, I'll dictate some more. The man starts taking his job seriously, and everybody stands around staring at him. Hello, Bessie. Oh, good morning, Miss Fairchild. Is Mr. Gildersleeve in? Well, Adeline. Peekaboo! Is anybody home? Peekaboo! <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> My gracious, you look busy this morning. Yeah, a lot to do. Well, you just stop that silly work now and come along with me to Hogan Brothers. Now, why should I go to Hogan Brothers? It's been so warm lately, I'm going to get a new summer play suit. Play suit? Ooh. And I want you to help me pick it out. Well, I don't think I should leave the office to help you pick out a summer play suit. <laughs> why not? We'll be playing together this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Won't we? Well, I'll try to budget some time for that. <laughs> but I'm pretty busy right now, Adeline, running the water department. Well, why do you have to stay around here? All you have to do is sit while people turn it on and off. <laughs> There's more to it than that, Adeline. I'm the executive around here. I do the thinking. I'm always studying ways to make the department better. You see, I've got a book here, Hydraulics. Mercy, what is hydraulics? Well, that's the stuff that water commissioners have to find out. Gracious, you are busy. Well, I'll try to log in. Nice of you to drop in that line. Sorry I'm so busy. Oh, Doc Morton, which do you think I should get? A one or a two-piece play suit? A one or a... <laughs> Maybe I should go with you. 
No. Bye, George. I'll stay on the job. Get out of here, Adeline. Well, all right. Goodbye. But remember, all work and no play makes Throckmorton a dull boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's the penalty for buckling down. Uh, hydraulics. Chapter one. One piece or two. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> hydraulics. What is it? Well, that's a good place to start. Hydraulics is that branch of science which treats of water or other fluids in Good motion. morning, Gildersleeve. Now, about these vacation schedules... Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Gildersleeve, what are you doing with your feet on the desk again? Are they back up there? And still reading during office hours. I warned you if I ever caught you loafing on the job again, I... Mr. Mayor, I'm studying. That's what you said yesterday. Bluff and baseball. But, Mr. Mayor, this time... This time, Gildersleeve, you're fired. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you asked for it. Good day. Be sorry. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> we'll be back with a great Gildersleeve in just a moment. You know, I hope this trouble doesn't affect Gildy's appetite, because according to Birdie, his eating habits are pretty interesting. That man can eat pancakes faster than I can make them. Well, no wonder, Birdie, you make such good pancakes. And you always serve parquet margarine as a topping. He just wolfs them down. Rolls, muffins, waffles, as well as pancakes and bread taste better with parquet. The fresh, sweet flavor of parquet makes it a favorite spread in millions of homes. And waffles? How that man chews up those waffles. Waffles, Parquet is perfect for waffles. It's the margarine of craft quality, you know. It's made from only choice farm products, and yet nourishing parquet is so economical. Without a doubt, parquet is the best buy for both bread and budget. And rolls. Mr. Gillsleeve eats rolls like other men eat peanuts. Just flips them down. Rolls topped with the rich, wholesome goodness of parquet are really delicious. Next time, friends, treat your family to appetizing, nourishing, economical parquet margarine. Serve it once, and you'll see what we mean when we say parquet tastes so good. That's parquet margarine, P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our overstuffed Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall. <laughs> and doesn't quite know how to put himself together again. Sacked. Now what, little fat man? The light in Adeline's window. No. There's a jolly boy meeting tonight. Hate to go up there, though. But it's beginning to sprinkle. Water. Gentlemen, gentlemen, now that everybody's here that's going to be here, I'd like to have the floor, if I may. We can't start a meeting of the Jolly Boys before the Water Commissioner gets here. Can we, Peavy? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> You can, according to Robin's rules of order. Yeah, let's get going. The commission is slower than the water he pipes into my shop. No, no, wait a minute, Floyd. I'm sure you wouldn't speak of our absent member in this manner if you knew the sad tidings that I bring. Something wrong, Judge? Gentlemen, our fellow jolly boy is no longer with the city. How's that? He's been fired. No. You don't say. The commission got the axe? Gosh, I'm sorry I opened my big fat mouth. Yes, gentlemen. A most grievous occurrence. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve was in the pharmacy only yesterday, looking just as natural. <laughs> of course, a fence post could have seen it coming. He wasn't the world's best water commissioner. Be that as it may, Floyd. I happen to know that when the blow fell, Gildy was reading a book on hydraulics, trying to improve himself. I personally called upon the mayor pleading for reason, but he said it was the mark of a weak executive to retract orders. And that sounds a little unreasonable as a mayor to me. Well, that's the news, gentlemen. Now, what can we jolly boys do for our friend Gildersleeve? 
He's a sad and a broken man. Well, the mayor kicked the commission out of office. Let's kick him out. Why? We pay his salary, don't we? We got a right to kick him around. Floyd, are you suggesting recall? No, I'm suggesting we kick him out. <laughs> he lowered the boom on the commish, we lower the boom on him. Right, Peavy? Well, that seems to be the way of the world. <laughs> Gentlemen, I I think I heard the door open. You did? I thought Gildy felt so blue he wouldn't be back. That's the commission's tread, all right. Well, let's not just be standing here when he comes up. Let's all try to be gay for Gilders. Yeah, let's start a song. How about Smile? Yeah, that's a happy song. Let's let's smile. Smile. Let's make you happy. There are smiles that make you blue. Like he's going back down. Yeah. Hey, come here. Wait a minute, Gilday. Well, I'll be right out into the rain. Oh, that's too bad. Probably we sounded too happy. Yes. Poor fellow. Gentlemen, I think we should seriously consider a petition for the mayor's recall. His honor has been unreasonable and dilatory in public affairs before. And there are a few little slip-ups that won't look good for him on a petition. Hot dog. You write up the stuff, Judge, and I'll sign it Just first. Just a minute, Floyd. Judge, if you don't mind, I'd like to be the first to sign that petition. Well, we'll all sign it. We'll do it, gentlemen, but remember, not a word about it to Gildersleeve. <laughs> Are you going to sit around the house all day again? Yeah, gosh, Unc. Well, I don't feel like going downtown, children. Besides, I've been busy reading want ads and making phone calls. Have you answered Mr. Peavy and Mr. Munson? Well, no, I can't face those fuzz. Probably all over town that your old uncle's a failure. Now, Unky, you're not a failure. Yes, I am. I failed you, little Leroy, Bertie. Don't worry, Unky. We'll manage. And I have a wonderful idea. Instead of running off to some stuffy resort, why don't we spend our vacation right here? What? Leroy. Oh. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure, great idea. And I know another way to save money, Unc. I'll go barefooted all summer. I'll make things back in the kitchen. Now, now, Bertie. I'll find something else. They can't keep a good man... A man down. <laughs> you should have your job back. The mayor was wrong and you know it. Yeah, the judge came over and told us you were right. Well... You're right all the time, Mr. Gilsey. That's one thing I'll say to you. You're right all the time. Now, Bertie... Yes, you are. That mayor did a wrong thing, and whenever a man does a wrong thing, he pays for it. Well, I was on the job sure, when Sure, he... Uncle. Why did you let the mayor fire you? If I was a man, I'd go down and tell him off. No, Leroy. I'll go down and tell him anyway. And run. If... <laughs> Leroy, I don't need you to fight my battles. You're not big enough. Well, I think it'd do you good to get out of the house anyway, Yankee. Why don't you dress up and go downtown? Just as if nothing had ever happened. Sure, I'd even go with you. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> go ahead, Anki. Yes, sir, Mr. Gillsleeve. When you go down the street, people will point at you and say, there goes the west best water commission in this town ever had. He's right. Well... Sure, everybody's on your side, Anki. Might go downtown at that. That's good news. I'll brush up your new suit, Mr. Gillsleeve. No use being right unless we tell the people about it. Yeah, my little family. I feel better already. <laughs> Glad you like the shave, friend, but skip the tip. Just sign the petition right here under the other name. Well, I don't exactly know what I'm saying. That's all right. It's for Betty City, Betty City Government. Oh, hi, Commish. Oh, Floyd. Hurry up and sign it. Had a boy. But I don't understand what. Shh, what do you care? You're just a traveling salesman. Uh, call again, stranger. <laughs> call again. Goodbye. <laughs> Who's that, Floyd? Just a fellow doing me a favor. 
Well, it's good to see you cracked out of your shell, Commish. We missed you at the Jolly Boys Club the other night. Well, I started up there, but other pressing matters came up. Yeah, I know. How about a shave and a haircut? That's what I came down for, Floyd. Sure. Hop into the chair. <laughs> and, uh... Until the silver lining shows through, Commish, the shaven haircut's on me. No, Floyd, things aren't that bad. Um, has the mayor contacted you yet? Mayor? No, why should he? Oh, nothing. But you ain't got no reason at all to be afraid of the mayor. Of course I haven't. I've never been afraid of him. That's a stuff. What did you say when he fired you, Commish? Well, I think I said, he... <laughs> So mad you couldn't talk, huh? Come to think of it, I was. You know, I never cared much for that guy. What a scheming politician. Always has his barber and done up the street, just because it's a three-vote shop. Yeah, that's the mayor, all right. Commissioner, he's done you wrong. If I was you, I'd tell him off. Don't worry, Floyd. I will the next time I see him. I've been sitting at home just thinking up a lot of things to tell him. That a boy. It's high time we got a new mayor anyway. I'll put a good scare into this one. We'll have his relative jumping out of City Hall like it was a sinking ship. What? And let me let you in on something. Most people think they can't hit a city official. You can hit them, same as you can hit a plumber. You, hmm. Never thought of that. Now, I think if you come into the guy at a slight crouch... No, see, Floyd, I know how to take care of then myself. Then maybe fake for the right of the floor. That's why I'm phoning you, Mr. Peavy. He's been awfully blue. Well, I can understand that, Marjorie. We finally got him to go downtown. So, uh, if he drops in the drugstore, I wish you'd do what you can to cheer him up. Well, I'd be happy to, Marjorie. Thank you, Mr. Peavy. You're very sweet. Well, now, I... <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> nice, level-headed girl, Marjorie. Now, what will I do to cheer that fellow up? Peavy. Well, speak of the devil. What'd you say, Peavy? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Haven't had the pleasure of seeing you around the last couple of days. No, Peavy, and you know why, so let's not bring up the subject. It's a pretty sore one with me. Oh, I wasn't going to, Mr. Gildersleeve. Care to read the funny paper? I've got an old one around here someplace. No, thanks. <laughs> Can you imagine the audacity of that mayor? Very well, then. I'll read it to you. Well, he's not going to get away with it. Let's take little Abner first, courtesy of United Features. I've decided I'm not going to take this sitting down, Peavy. No, sir. Little Abner's holding Salome. That's the pig. And he says... And the next time I see that little powder pigeon... Go ahead and eat the money, Salome. It's yours. He's going to hear from me. And Salome, that's the pig, says, erp, erp. <laughs> What? Herp, herp. Gee, Peavy, what are you doing? I'm reading you the funny paper. What for? To cheer you up. And then Mr. Fatbat says... Fat... Look, Peavy, if you think I'm unhappy because I'm not water commissioner anymore, you're mistaken. I can take it. Well, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Judge. And Gildersleeve. I didn't expect to see you here. How are you, old friend? I'm fine. <laughs> and don't you try to cheer me up, too, Judge. Oh? Well... I came to pick up the signatures you've collected, Peavy. Very well, here they are. Huh? Ah, a lot of names. You did well. <laughs> what is this? Floyd was collecting signatures, and now you are. And Peavy, you know who has heard about you know what, and he's plenty worried. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Well, thank you, Peavy. See you around, Gildet. Peavy, what's going on here? What are you fellas up to? Well... Out uh, with it, Peavy. Well, uh, about the mayor... The we, next uh, time I see that little Napoleon, the sparks are going to fly. Speak of the devil. Well, hello, Mr. Gillsleeve. Huh? I mean, hello, Terwilliger. I, uh, <clears throat> I've been looking all over for you. I've been looking all over for you, too. I think I'll go look for something in your back room. Yeah. <laughs> You wait a minute, Peavy. I want you to hear this. Terwilliger, I've taken all I'm going to take from you, and I'm here to say... Gentlemen, I wonder if you'd mind stepping back from the showcases a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gildersleeve, before you say anything, I've come to offer your job back. My job? That's not fair. I was about to tell you off. What? But I do have a little family to think of. 
I accept. Fine. As mayor of Summerfield, I now officially reinstate you as water commissioner. Water commissioner. We let bygones be bygones. But, Commissioner Gildersleeve, the next time I catch you reading pulp magazines during office hours... I... I wasn't reading magazines that time. I can't work for an unreasonable tyrant like you. I resign. I quit. Quit? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Commissioner Gildersleeve, you can't quit. Why can't I? I just did. You don't want me to lose my job, too, do you? What? Well, uh, <clears throat> this is embarrassing for me, Gildersleeve, but it seems a silly petition for recalling the mayor is being circulated around by some... Uh, some uh, Public-spirited citizen. Public-spirited citizen. <laughs> Public-spirited? You didn't sign it, did you, Mr. Peavy? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, a recall petition, you say, Mr. Mayor? Well, in that case, I accept my job back again. Oh, well, fine, Gildersleeve. And now, Mr. Mayor, since you don't dare fire me, there are a few things I've been saving up to tell you, Shorty. Oh, oh, oh? In the first place, you let me run the water department and stop snooping around my office. You scare Bessie. Get that straight. Oh, Commissioner! And in the second place... I want my salary boosted up to what you pay your relatives. You understand? And now, Commissioner... Remember, Twilliger, you're not so big. You just comb your hair high. <laughs> and another thing... <laughs> yeah, this is fun. And another thing, Madam Pompadour... <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back, so stick around. Remember, ladies, when you buy Parquet, you're doing more than stretching your budget. True, Parquet is a money saver, but just as important, you're getting the spread preferred by millions of women all over America for fresh, rich flavor. Yes, Parquet is the perfect topping for rolls, pancakes, toast, bread, and hot vegetables because it tastes so good. Delicious Parquet provides plenty of wholesome nourishment, too. It's rich in food energy, and every pound is enriched with 15,000 units of vitamin A. Once you try Parquet, the Kraft Quality Margarine, you'll agree it's the best buy for bread and budget. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Mr. Gildersleeve, congratulations on still being water commissioner. Thank you, Bessie. And I really mean it about buckling down. I'm going to work and study and make this the best water department in the country. Uh, starting September 8th. What? We're all going on our vacations right now, Bessie. Whee! <laughs> Folks, this is our last broadcast of the season. But we'll be back as usual for the Kraft Foods Company on September 8th. Before we go, I'd like to thank all the members of our cast for the nice times we've had together during the year. There's Louise Erickson, who plays Marjorie, Walter Tetley, our little Leroy, and Lillian Randolph, whom you know as Bertie. Getting outside the family, there's Una Merkel, who came to Summerfield this year as Adeline Fairchild. <laughs> and Gloria Holiday, who is Bessie. I've decided not to get rid of Bessie. And Stan Farrar, who plays the mayor. Thanks, too, to the Jolly Boys, who really helped me out tonight. Arthur Q. Bryan and Ken Christie, who are Floyd and Chief Gates. And, of course, with every season that goes by, we appreciate more and more our two fine old standbys, Earl Ross, who plays Judge Hooker, and Richard Legrand, who is Mr. Peavy. John Elliott and Andy White wrote tonight's script. Hi, Andy. And on alternate weeks, you hear stories by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson. We also want to thank John Wall, our announcer, Monty Fraser for sound effects, Ray Ferguson, our engineer, Jack Meekin and the orchestra, Frank Pittman for his paternal eye, and Fran Van Hardisfeld, our director. Good night, everybody. See you on Wednesday, September 8th. <laughs> Listen to the Jack Pearl Show on this station same time next Wednesday and every Wednesday until September 8th when The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Terry, returns. For the last time, listen to this amazing offer. A stainless steel cake and pie knife with a gleaming six-inch serrated blade and a handle of beautiful agatron. A dollar and a quarter retail value for just 35 cents and one label from a package of Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. It's your last chance to get this cake and pie knife at less than half its regular price. 
Send 35 cents plus one Pabstet package label to the Phoenix Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. That address for the last time, the Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.